So we have amazing speaker as you just heard and experienced yourself and some speaker go the extra mile for us to be here and some do it in a way that they wake up super, super early. I mean, we went here very early, but other speakers um, do that at three o'clock in the morning, maybe, yes? Yes, Nico, yeah. So we have a phenomenal next talk coming up because our society is changing every day and we um, had him last year up here on stage and it was really very inspiring talk about what is going to change in our society and what's happening. So we don't always know what he's going to talk about, but we know that it's great stuff. And as we all know, he's quite into all the topics that are changing right now or that are disrupting us. And he's an expert in social media and in all the digital age and everything that has to do with media in general. I would just put it very nicely in this cloud. He's the COO of the Next Media Accelerator. Please welcome with a very warm extra applause, Nico Luma. Morning. Yeah, it was really early this morning, uh, thanks to Lufthansa. Um, yeah, let's talk about politics a little. Um, and thanks, Jeremy. Uh, I still have that soundtrack from your video stuck in my head. Uh, was that programmed by AI or was it you? It was a really interesting song. Uh, Jeremy and I actually spent half a year in the same office, uh, which is a lot of fun, and uh, I think we have to do that again sometime. Um, but now, let's talk about politics. Um, I think 2016 is really weird when you look at politics. You know, you see that I can't click. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, uh, there's this Chinese curse. You, know, you live in interesting times. And I think that's exactly what's happening right now. Not just when you look at digital, but also when you look at politics. Because we have this, this really weird um, um, development, uh, the populace everywhere. You know, we've seen these guys in England doing the Brexit. <clears throat> I was in, in England this summer. I know, summer in England, yeah, good idea. Um, but, you know, about half the people I met uh, apologized for the Brexit and told us how stupid this idea is. And I was like, yeah, don't tell me, tell your folks. Um, and after that, you know, we all heard about uh, what happened in the U.S. with Trump, um, who appealed to voters who said, we want change, and who appealed to voters who felt left behind. And, you know, for me, the big question is, you know, he's not going to change the, the gap between rich and poor. You know, I mean, the change he'll bring will just increase the gap. So it's really an interesting uh, way of thinking about how they vote and how they came to their decision. But, you know, it's, uh, it's not that we can just look at the U.S. and think, you know, yeah, in the U.S., you know, crazy people. You know, we have people like, like Frau Petri as well, you know. And the uh, so-called Alternative for Deutschland uh, isn't an alternative at all. Um, their, their program, if you look at it, is not only blatantly racist, but also, um, you know, geared towards taking away rights and uh, money from the people and widening this gap again. So it's really interesting that people think about easy solutions and then vote for right-wing populists, um, not only here, but also elsewhere in Europe and in the U.S., um, so when I talk to people, they all come to me and say, we have to do something. Because um, I'm pretty open about being a member of the SPD. I've been a member for over 28 years. And I, I tell that to people, and I'm not afraid of, you know, the occasional laugh about that or uh, the typical harassment you get um, when you belong to a party. But, you know, people know that I'm politically active. They come to me and say, we have to do something. I say, yeah. All right, and the next question is, but what? Because all you guys are like, let's see some hands. How many people here are a member of a party, a political party in Germany? Wow, wow, it's like three people. It's amazing, you know? So people don't really know anymore how to do that. What do you do at a party? What can you achieve? How long does it take? Will it last? Will it be painful? 
you know. If you look at, at, at this um, little statistic, you know, most people who join political parties are around 60. That's the party membership in Germany, 60, all right? So now think about the topics at heart for you guys, you know? Think about that. Like, I don't know, maybe bike lanes, maybe digital stuff, maybe childcare, maybe education. Is that really something people think about when they're 60? Probably not. So politics is geared toward those people because those are the guys making the decisions. 60. Really. Think about that. Think about what Jeremy just said about the future, how fast it is developing, and then only old people are the ones who join political parties. I think we have a problem, and I think you guys are part of the problem. This is what an SPD local uh, affiliation looks like, you know? And I just Googled SPD Ortsverein, and uh, pictures all look like that, you know? But this is what you have to join. You have to mingle with those people and tell them about the future. And you really have to join them. You know, and if you think, yeah, that's the SPD, you know, this is the CSU here in Bavaria, <laughs> you know? Now think, of, think about what you have to do. You have to join them, you know? I would think bring friends along because What's happening right now is so many people are alienated by the political system, only few people are actively engaged in politics. So if you bring friends along, if you bring like five friends along, you can actually do politics because you can get minor uh, majorities in the local affiliations. You will probably be voted into an office because nobody else is running. Um, it's really that bad. My, my stepdad is 78. Uh, he's heading a local uh, SPD Ortsverein uh, up in, in northern Germany because they couldn't find anyone else. 78. That's the future. You know, bring friends along and take over the local party affiliations. Just do that. It's really easy. And then hopefully the next picture won't look like that. You know, maybe there's even like a woman. Wow. Uh, <laughs> But really, bring friends along, you know, if, if you all suffer the same pain, you know, it's probably less pain for everybody. But then, what are you going to do if you join the party, bring friends along, and they look at you and say, what an interesting idea, and then you're sitting there, what are you doing? You have to explain everything, and very slowly. Because they've been doing the same thing over and over again for the last 20, 30 years. They're stuck in their paradigm and tell them that the internet won't go away anymore. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, but you know, that's, that's something you have to explain to them over and over again, you know? The internet is everywhere. You know, even though this is just a simple picture, this is what it looks like at home. I mean, we don't have those, uh, you know, we have different tiles in the bathroom, not brown. Um, but, you know, there's always like an, an, a tablet lying around in the bathroom or a charger, uh, sometimes I find my son was 10 with a laptop on his knees. I don't know whether it's the high score or something else taking longer, but you know, that's normal for us. And what we also see is that the futures are here, it's just unleavened distributed. So you guys are more advanced, but others are not. Others could be around you, friends, family, um, or in your, in your office, or you know, in your neighborhood. You know, there's always somebody who's really not that interested in those topics and doesn't really understand what's happening right now. But what we have to do is we have to reclaim the political discourse. You know, we all know that stuff that Jerry just talked about, that's going to happen in our lifetime. We all know that things that used to be science fiction are becoming a reality right now. We know that. Uh, um, who of you did see that uh, Star Trek movie thing it was number four when they came back to Earth in like 85? Did anybody see that? So a long time ago. But you, you remember Scotty. And Scotty had a problem. Scotty needed to talk to a computer. So he asked the guy from the Earth in 85, 
where's the computer? And he pointed to, to an Apple Macintosh, and Scotty approached the Macintosh and said, computer, please calculate. And then the guy from Earth said, no, you have to take the mouse. So he took the mouse and said, computer, please calculate. You know, Now we can do that. I mean, that's Alexa, Siri, and, and all those um, artificial intelligence systems that we have around us. But most people don't understand that. Most people don't understand what's happening right now. So we have to reclaim the political discourse. We have to tell them what matters, because they don't get it yet. You know, um, at my accelerator, we funded Repolitics half a year ago. They're trying exactly that. They're trying to get political discourse going, uh, which is much better organized than, than in forums or on Facebook or whatnot. It's a very simple tool that you can use to get online participation going again without too much hate speech, without too many annoying people, you know, with just people who are interested in topics to get going on those topics. <clears throat> I also think that we have to take a stance against white and populism. I think we really have to speak up and tell them that they're stupid, that they don't know what they're talking about, and that they should look at the facts and not make up the facts. And I think we have to do this louder and louder because they're loud as well, and we have to take a stance against that. And as I said before, we have to focus on the future. And we have to take over those political parties. You know, I think, you know, if you look at the people running the show in, in Berlin, most of them are really clueless. Most of them are just reacting to what's happening. And um, I think that's not enough. I think we have to take over the political parties. Because what we see is an acceleration. We see that everything is going faster and faster and faster. The cycles of in innovation are faster and faster as well. But po politics is still very slow. You know, this is the typical development we see when we look at tech. I mean, this is just uh, the population development of Bangladesh, so that doesn't have anything to do with this, but the curve is so nice. That's why I always show it. Um, but, you know, this is how Internet of Things develops. So in, like, uh, four years, we'll have 50 billion devices on the net. And that means something, because all those devices are talking to each other. You know, machine-to-machine -machine communication will drastically change the way we live, we work, and uh, how we manufacture things. You know, but people still don't understand that. People still think this is like a slow development, you know, but that slow development is over. It's gone exponential. Um, and if you look at the acceleration growth uh, in technology, and if you look at how things develop, how many new things we have in the last couple of years, you know, this is breathtaking. But we can't deal with this when we still have the mindset of the last century. You know, also, I guess we have to focus more on, on the important things and, you know, make sure that we fund the projects that are worthwhile. Um, so the big question is, and Jeremy said we have to ask questions, I think the big question is, how do we make sure that we don't leave too many people behind? Because that's what, what's already happened. People are afraid of change. People feel left behind. But they really haven't seen the change yet. The change is just coming in the next five to ten years. And then things will get even worse. So, we can't turn back the clock. It doesn't matter what the populists say, we just can't. But I think there are three big topics that we have to talk about. And uh, I think those three topics are going to be the game changers for us as a society in the next couple of years. One thing is broadband. This is where Germany is. 1.5% of the households have broadband. Who of you has broadband at home? Fiber? Glass, fa glass fiber? All right. 10 people. 15 maybe. You know, that's just not enough. I had fiber at my dorm in 97. I had 100 Mbit in my dorm in 97 because I laid it there myself. And uh, I was just offline for the second time within six weeks for about a week. There was horror. My kids were nervous. We couldn't watch Netflix. It was just weird. Um, don't want to experience that again. But, you know, we have to do that. We have to increase the broadband penetration in Germany. You know, Sweden. Sweden isn't exactly full of urban areas. They have about 50% of the country with fiber. You know, we have to achieve that as well. 
but we're not doing that because the German telecom is saying, hey, you know, we're just doing this VDSL vectoring thing um, because that's just, you know, how we want to roll because it saves our investments. You know, and uh, the government has long, long neglected that broadband really is about this. It's about participation. If you have broadband, you have access to culture, to entertainment, to work, uh, you know, to fun, to communication, whatever, but you need to have broadband. It's, you know, not sufficient anymore to have a modem connection. Um, second thing, digital education. We really have to get better at this. You know, we had this, uh, this morning uh, in the, the keynote um, that 25% of the German population, you know, can deal with computer things, you know. That's a problem. We have to change that. Um, Professor Kathy Davidson pointed out that most kids in school now will work in jobs later that don't exist yet. That means we really have to change the way we teach. We have to change the way we enable those kids to understand what's going to happen in the future. A, friend of, uh, a few friends of mine um, just introduced this. That's Kayopi. Um, it's kind of like uh, the microbit controller uh, that the BBC sent out to every kid in, in England or in the UK um, from grade 7, I think. Um, Kayopi Mini was just introduced last week, and they want to roll it out for kids uh, starting at, uh, I think, third grade. And uh, that's essentially a mini-computer that allows kids to program this, to have sensors attached to it, and to play around with it and, you know, make fun things and uh, get started with computers, you know, and uh, experience what it could be like to work with data and sensors and, and all that. And we have to do more, than, more like that. That's really, really cheap stuff, but we have to hand it out to kids to get them to be more than just a passive user. They have to understand what, what's happening when data and programming languages connect to devices. Also, we have to look at the way work changes. You know, um, we are all privileged because we're doing this digital stuff and I've been doing this for like 20 years now and it's fun and we know that things are changing, but there are other people um, who thought that they would just get a job and after 30 years or 35 years they will retire. Um, but their job description will be gone pretty soon. You know, this is... Uh, um, Nice table from the OECD that shows how likely uh, or how much at risk your job is depending on, on uh, the creativity that you have to apply in the job. So in Germany, about 45% of the jobs will be affected by the automation that we'll have in the future. So every job that is not creative, like if you have data here and your keyboard here and you have to type it in and then the data is there, that's going to be gone. So the wonderful German word, Sachbearbeiter, we won't have that in the future anymore because it'll become pointless. But if you think about people who work as Sachbearbeiter, you know, they're part of the middle class. They have a house, they have two cars, and their job will be gone in five to ten years. And that should be really scary for those people, you know. And so if we have people who feel left behind now, just think about how many people will feel left behind in the future if we don't enable them to, you know, keep on learning, understanding how digital works and, you know, change their job description. So that's a big thing. Um, but, you know, um, I think we have to work on those three things and really get going because the time is running out. Uh, Jeremy said we don't have enough kids and you guys should all produce more kids. I have four kids and I want those kids to have a future. And we can't do that with ideas from the last century. So we have to really work on that, and you guys have to join a party and do that. If you don't want to do that, there's one more thing. You can also join my political think tank I founded uh, five years ago. Uh, we don't meet in meet space. We only meet on Facebook. Uh, come join us and talk about the topics that are at heart for you. Uh, talk about the future. Talk about work, uh, education, and broadband. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, join the party. Thanks. Welcome.